Hey guys, Greg here. Guess where I've been to? The local library. LA Public Library has a uh, sale that I went to today and I got some amazing CDs. I was really kind of shocked. Last year, you may recall, I went to this same sale and I found 50 or 60 records for a dollar, you know, stuff like this, you know, a buck. Ah, amazing sale. Uh, so somebody I know who uh, works there said, hey, the sale's coming up. We got some vinyl. There's no jazz. There's classical, some junk. Yeah, you won't be interested. Okay, I went anyway, and I was interested because there was some amazing jazz. I got a whole bag. I showed you the empty bag. That's the full bag. I got a lot of stuff on CD. I'm not really looking out for CDs and collecting CDs, but when you find stuff that's amazing for like a buck each, you go for it. Even if it's a double or triple disc set, they're only going to charge you a buck. Like John Coltrane, live in Japan on Impulse. Uh, who plays on here? You're going to ask me? Well, Pharaoh Sanders and Alice Coltrane and uh, other people. Rashid Ali, stretching out long tunes, Afro Blue, etc. Th three disc set, I think. F oh my gosh, it says four disc set. Are all four discs in here, I hope? Because that would be a shame if we missed. Ah, there was one hiding behind the cup. booklet. Yeah, there's four discs. Wow. That's worth a dollar, I think. Don't you agree? Okay, keep going. Steve Lacey, kind of one of his most uh, well-known records, but uh, Steve Lacey, alto sax player, kind of free out there, kind of a player. Uh... Momentum. I've seen this record a lot. I can't say I know it very well, but it's mine. I will listen to it. I haven't listened to any of these yet, by the way. I just got them home the last couple hours. All right. I know some people will be jealous of this one. On the New Jazz label. Check this out. Where's Ron Carter? Eric Dolphy wants to know. Mal Waldron wants to know. Where's Ron Carter? Um, what year? 1961. Eric Dolphy, Ron Carter. Come on, guys. That's amazing. Oh, and they reproduced the label of the original LP on the CD. Some of you don't like the Rudy Van Gelder remaster editions in terms of uh, sound quality. I don't know. I'm not going to complain for a dollar. All right. Here's one. I looked at the cover and I said, I have no idea what that is. But it looks like something I might be interested in. Do we have enough light in here? We kind of don't have enough light in here. Okay, it says Miracle with a K. And it looked trippy, so I pulled it out of the stack. And I say, oh, Jamaladeen Takuma. How many people can pronounce Jamaladeen Takuma? He played bass with Ornette Coleman and sort of the later part of Ornette's career. Uh, electric bass and also Derek Bales. Is it Bales or Bailey? Derek Bailey, the very out there guitar player, plays on here. So that is going to be some weird, free, funky, electric, weird jazz. All right, here's one. I never heard of this record before. Joe Henderson, the brilliant sax player on Enja on the Enja label, Barcelona. This looks like it's later in his career. 1977, recorded at. Uh, Wichita State University, know nothing about it, but if somebody offers me Joe Henderson for a dollar, I don't care if it's LP, CD, cassette, uh, bubblegum wrapper, I'm going to get it. How many people like this record? That's right, The Rump Roller by Lee Morgan on Blue Note. This is 19, what year, 1965, and... Yeah, we got some Joe Henderson and some Billy Higgins. Oh, there's a tune on here by Wayne Shorter called Venus de Mildew. That's kind of funny. So, there's a classic, a Blue Note classic. Probably available on, what, Tone Poet or Classic Series by now, but I don't have it on vinyl. All right, let's keep going, guys. Bear with me. This is only going to get better and better. And, uh... Two geniuses, two brilliant geniuses. Keith Jarrett on piano, Charlie Hayden on bass, 
who passed away a few years ago. Uh, a record called Jasmine on the ECM label, which is always wonderful stuff. And this is really just the two of these guys getting together. 2010, by the way. Uh, spontaneously recording some classic ballads and love songs. Haven't heard it? It's probably wonderful, right? It's got to be wonderful. I got two ECMs in a row here. How is that possible? A uh, new series ECM that I am not familiar with at all. A piano player named Alexei Lugamov. Uh, and I pulled that up 2002. I pulled it up. The first thing I saw was Bach. Okay, I got a lot of Bach. John Cage. Wow, now you're talking. Debussy, Bartok, Licht, all in the same record. So a lot of interesting classical E type music on ECM. Save this one for last. Later, 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 okay, what else? Guys, there's like 18 or 20 records in here, so just bear with me. How many of you know this record or this guitar player, Pat, Pat Martino? Kind of uh, a bebop-y, hard bopping, really fast uh, guitar player, and I don't have any of his records, and he just passed away a couple years ago. And so the first record I have by Pat Martino, I got today at a library sale. Now. The title and uh, artwork East kind of sounds, oh, is this far Eastern? Is this spiritual? No, it's straight ahead, hard bopping jazz like you'd expect from Pat Martini. That's okay. Haven't heard it. I read about some of these. I spent a few minutes reading just to be prepared for you guys. Here's a beautiful record that I don't have on LP. I wish I did, but now I have it on CD. Kenny Burrell at the Five Spot Cafe on Blue Note. Uh, some great players on here. Of course, Art Blakey, Bobby Timmons on piano, Tina Brooks on sax. Um, Kenny Burrell has a tune on here called 362336. That's some kind of music notation, I guess. I don't know. Uh, 1959, all right. A Blue Note classic. Okay. Guys, this is... Uh, I saved the best for the middle because this is probably the most valuable and rare uh, record in the whole package here. I don't know how many of you guys know Paul Blay? Paul Blay, sort of a post-bop, avant-garde, creative, free jazz, free spirit, piano player. This uh, Paul Blay Quintet Barrage from 1964, New York City. Paul Blay was married to Carla Blay for a while. You may know that. Check out who plays on here. Marshall Allen. He is still playing with the Sun Ra Orchestra, and I think he is 95 or 96 years old, still playing with uh, what's left of Sun Ra's band. And an even more incredible name in some ways, Milford Graves, the uh, percussionist and drummer. And there, uh, a, a movie, documentary about Milford Graves just came out in the last year or so that uh, I saw online. Milford Graves was this amazing, brilliant guy. He did cardiology and he invented his own martial arts. And he was this theorist about rhythm and the universe. So anyway, really, uh, this LP goes for 200 bucks if you could find the original LP. And I saw the CD online for 40, 50 bucks. So, yes, thank you. Thank you, Jazz Gods, for bringing me some of these records. CDs. CDs are types of records. Don't forget that. Gigolo, Lee Morgan, another Blue Note classic. 19. The writing is so small, I can't see on these things. But we got Wayne Shorter, Harold Mayburn, Bob Crenshaw, Billy Higgins. Okay, another Blue Note classic. Again, it's the Rudy Van Gelder Remaster Series. Not everybody likes the sound of those. I'm too tone deaf to know or care the difference. Okay. Here's a record that I like so much, even though I have it on LP, I couldn't pass up the CD version. Youssef Latif, Eastern Sounds. This I just got the uh, reissue of this a couple of years ago on Prestige. This has... The most incredible ballad, Love Theme from Spartacus, written by Alex North. Alex North did the music for a lot of Kubrick films. He wrote all the music for uh, Space Odyssey 2001, but 
Kubrick threw it away and didn't use it. Uh, anyway, this is this is kind of a, a classic for uh, Youssef Latif. Okay, being the nice guy that I am, I got a record for my beautiful wife because she loves all kinds of pop music. She doesn't like jazz. But when I saw this record, I'm like, what on earth is going on here? Check this out. Look at that. Marshall Crenshaw. Okay. Marshall Crenshaw is a great poppy singer-songwriter. And people have this image of him that he's kind of uh, wimpy, maybe is the word. It's kind of what I call wimp pump. But now he is the new singer, lead singer of the Smithereens, because their leader just died not too long ago. So, But I bought this. This just stood out to me like, wow, what's with the packaging? And then this little booklet unfolds, and it's sort of an op art. It's crazy, man. Check it out. Okay. I should have put up a disclaimer. May cause seizures. Uh, how about some John Coltrane at Newport Beach? That sounds... Newport Jazz Festival. That sounds like it would be one of my favorite things on Impulse. Let's see. Imp Newport 63 and Newport 65. And did this record come out on LP or just CD? Some of those Coltrane records, I don't know if they've released on LP. Coltrane at the Newport Jazz Festival. I can't tell who plays on here. And my eyes are terrible. And my ears are terrible. You've heard that before. I mean, it's obvious, right? My hair is terrible. What's good about you, Greg? I have a lot of records. That's it. Lee Morgan. Candy. Lee Morgan with Sonny Clark. Art Taylor. Doug Watkins. I want to give you a year at least. So this looks like it's... How rare is this? A Japanese pressing of a CD. Is that collectible? I don't know. It's kind of cool. The side art is a little weird. Uh, it's a blue note. It's not one of the best blue note covers, but how could you pass that up? I wouldn't pass it up. Reach into the grab bag, see what else we got. More John Abercrombie, oh, more ECM, I should say. John Abercrombie, wonderful guitar player. Most of his stuff was on ECM. He died just a few years ago. Uh, Joe Lovano on sax plays on here. Joey Barron plays on here. I was fortunate enough to see uh, John Abercrombie play a couple of times, and the only time I ever so far have been to the Blue Note in New York was to see, J well, to see John Abercrombie. And I got to see two sets in a row, because the maitre d' could tell I was digging the music. I wasn't there to drink or talk or pick up on people. I was there by myself on a business trip, and I got to see John Abercrombie up close and personal at the Blue Note with Joey Barron on drums. I forget who was playing on bass. Okay, how could you pass this up? I'm not sure if I have this or not on LP, but now I have Bobby Hutcherson dialogue. A lot of reflection there. Bobby, what if we took it out of the jewel case to show you Bobby Hutcherson dialogue on Blue Note? The players on here are outstanding and astounding. Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, Sam Rivers on sax, Andrew Hill on piano, Joe Chambers on the bass. Any good tunes on here? Again, I can't read it. They're mostly Andrew Hill song, songs. Did this just come on on Toe Poet, Tone Poet? Because maybe I just bought it on the Tone Poet. I don't know. Oh my gosh, we're down to nearly the end, guys. How about a trip to Hungary, Hungary for Gabor Szabó, if that's how you pronounce his name, Hungarian guitar player, on Impulse. And he did some a lot of pop songs, and you know he was just kind of a uh, having a good time kind of guitar player. The first song on here is "The Beat Goes On," a Sonny and Cher tune, but that's what the '60s was all about, baby, the beat, and. Uh, I don't know who, oh, Marty Morell plays here on the drums. That's, is that Dave Brubeck's drummer, Marty Morell? Uh, I have very little Gabor Shabo Shabo on, on any format. Okay, here's the last one. 
Would you pay a dollar for three discs or four discs or a six disc set? Would you pay a dollar for a 10 disc set? Okay. Jazz sounds and movie soundtracks. I've been looking for something like this for a while. Um, basically the whole film noir uh, that goes with great jazz from the 50s, maybe the 60s. So right on the cover, we've got Miles Davis playing in the ear of the beautiful, what was her name, Jean Jean something. She was in that movie. Um, uh, it's called uh, Elevator to the Scaffolds, Lift to the Scaffolds. Really a great film noir, black and white classic. And Miles Davis composed the soundtrack to that sort of live while watching the, um, the movie in studio there. And the, this is a photo of them goofing around during the session. But 10 discs, let's open her up and see what we got here, guys. Okay, they've repeated the same art on every disc, but Miles Davis, Art Blakey, uh, uh, I'm trying to read in French, I don't know what this says, De Femme de Bleh Bleh Bleh, I don't know. Duke Ellington, Louis Armstrong, Anatomy of a Murder. That's a great Duke Ellington uh, soundtrack. And Paris Blues, Duke Ellington with Louis Armstrong. These are movies I want to see, but I also want to enjoy the music. Jerry Mulligan doing I Want to Live. I think I know that movie. We're going through these fast guys. Chico Hamilton, Dizzy Reese, Reith, Sweet Smell of Success, Nowhere to Go, The Criminal. We're going through them fast. Barney Weiland. Barney Weiland plays sax on that Miles Davis record. And Barney Weiland is the sax player from France. Uh, oh, the, the one name on here that kind of sold me, if, if this was the only guy on this record I would have bought it, is Krzysztof Komeda the Polish composer, and he did a lot of film noir stuff. If you can find Polish jazz or any records of Krzysztof Komeda's um, compositions, go for it. And again, movies in foreign languages that I can't pronounce, so I won't bother. Duke Jordan, Dangerous Liaisons, Marshall Solal, Breathless. Okay. Uh, I have Dangerous Liaisons the um, Art Blakey version on LP. Mundell Lowe, the, the guitar player, Satan in High Heels. These could be B-movies. I don't even know what that movie is. Uh oh, what's this? Someone wrote a personal handwritten note on there. 11 to 18, blah or black? I don't know. Elmer Bernstein, Man with a Golden Arm. Alex North, again. Streetcar Named Desire, Modern Jazz Quartet, Odds Against Tomorrow. Okay, guys, you don't... I went through most of them. I'm sorry I, I spent too much time on that, but I'm excited about this little... Oh, so this seems to be a cheesy, unauthorized, Euro trash kind of a release. Okay, and I'm the biggest critic of those, those uh, labels like Wax Time and Waxy and D.O.L., and Doxy, all those Euro trash labels that do not pay royalties where royalties may be due. So this is made in the EU, as we would assume. And uh, I don't want to trash this label because I might be wrong. This might not be one of those, but I have a feeling it is. Guys, that's like 20-ish releases and 35-ish individual discs and when am i going to listen to all this stuff guys support your local library that's all i can say give them stuff donate them stuff so they can make money and then go back and buy stuff so they can make money and uh check check out stuff from them because it's a great resource there and uh what else can i tell you guys thank you for watching and excited to get into this stuff let me know what you think. Let me know if you heard any of these. Let me know if you care or don't care or don't. Talk to you soon. Have a good one. And keep spinning vinyl or CDs. Why not?